Hello everyone. Myself, uh, Nadeem Ahmed, a third year PG resident, Department of Radio Diagnosis, Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College, AMU Aligarh. Going to present a case on amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. A 30 year female presented in OPT with history of progressive weakness of bilateral upper and lower limb for one year. Few months later, the patient developed generalized fasciculations, dysarthria and dysphasia. On examination, generalized fasciculations were observed with no muscular atrophy. Tendon reflexes were increased. Sensation and coordination were no, uh, normal. The patient's informed consent for description of the case was given. Motor nerve conduction study was performed in the right ulnar and perineal nerves. The parameters of sensory nerve conduction in the ulnar and sural nerves were normal. Parameters of motor unit action potentials such as amplitude, duration, and size index were found to be significantly increased in each of the examined muscles, suggesting neurogenic abnormalities such as chronic denervation. According to the re uh, revised uh, L escorial criteria clinically definite ALS was diagnosed and MRI brain and spine was advised. This is axial T2 uh, cut section of uh, MRI brain shows hyperintensity along the course of corticospinal tract. Flare shows uh, this is axial uh, flare scan shows hyperintensity along the course of corticospinal tract. This is SWI imaging showing blooming in both precentral gyri, also known as motor band sign. So amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is also known as motor neuron disease or low Gehrig disease. Etiology, upper motor neuron is in the primary motor cortex and send exons inferiorly along the corticospinal tract to pass through the brain stem, decussate at the cervical medullary junction and travel into the spinal cord. ALS is characterized by progressive degeneration of motor neuron in the both brain and spinal cord. Pathology. Evidence of widespread muscle atrophy affecting limb and intercostal muscles and the diaphragm is typical at autopsy. The major histopathological change in ALS is loss of motor cortex, brain stem and anterior horns of the spinal cord. Epidemiology. ALS has an incidence of 1 to 2 per 1 lakh and is the most common motor neuron disease. ALS is mostly sporadic, 10 to 15% cases are familial. The average age of onset in familial ALS is 10 years earlier than in sporadic ALS. Presentation, signs of both UMN and LMN disease are generally required for the clinical diagnosis. Evidence of UMN degeneration includes hypertonicity, hyperreflexia, and pathologic reflexes. LMN disease results in muscle fasciculations, atrophy, and weakness. Disease onset is typically insidious as at least 30% of anterior horn cells are lost before weakness becomes clinically apparent. Natural history, although median survival from diagnosis to death is between 3 and 4 years, 10% of patients survive beyond 10 years. Death is generally from respiratory failure due to diaphragm weakness. On imaging, T2 flare hyperintensity is unusual but can occur anywhere from the subcortical white matter through the posterior limb of internal capsule, cerebral pedangle, pons to medullary pyramids, and spinal cord. Changes are usually most prominent in the posterior limb of internal capsule and cerebral pedangles. T2 weighted SWI image may demonstrate hypointensity in the precentral cortex, also known as motor band sign, as seen. Differential diagnosis. The major differential diagnosis of ALS is the normal hyperintensity of compact, fully myelinated white matter tracts. Another diagnostic consideration is primary lateral sclerosis. PLS is a juvenile autosomal recessive motor neuron disease that affects only motor neuron. Valerian degeneration can cause T2 flare hyperintensity along the corticospinal tract but is unilateral. Other disorders that may demonstrate T2 hyperintensity along the corticospinal tract, including demyelinating and inflammatory disease, metabolic disorders such as acute hypoglycemic coma, and infiltrating neoplasm. Discussion. Fasciculations were present and are characteristic clinical finding in ALS. Fasciculations, however, are a non-specific finding related to neuropathic dysfunction. Fasciculations are not considered of clinical significance for ALS without associated evidence of neurogenic changes on needle EMG in the motor units recorded edge fasciculation. 
such motor unit abnormalities were not seen. Electrodiagnostic studies in patients with possible ALS are critical for not only aiding in the diagnosis, but also helpful, helping to provide information that could be consistent with a different potentially treatable diagnosis. And conclusion, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis should be considered in patient with a rapidly progressive unexplained neuropathic process. This should be true even if there are atypical clinical and electrodiagnostic findings. Absence of response to th therapy and development of upper motor neuron signs should reinforce the possibility that ALS may be present. Since ALS is a fatal illness, however, the possibility of this disease in patient with ALS clinical should not be should not diminish the need for a thorough diagnostic evaluation and treatment trials. Thank you.